I'm Kevin Mims with The Invading Sea, a Florida-wide media collaborative that reports on climate change in the state. As part of that effort, we've started The Business of Climate Change, a weekly interview of businessmen and women whose companies are either affected by the warming climate or address climate challenges. Today's conversation is with Henry Pino, president of Ecopod Kiosks. Henry, thanks for talking with us today. Sure. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. Henry, first, can you tell me a little bit about what Ecopod is and why you started it? Sure. So uh, Ecopod, I'll start off with, it's a, uh, a um, retail high technology system uh, that is, uh, it refills uh, products. It can refill up to 59% of all supermarket products. Um, anything from, I guess, water all the way up to like mustard and mayonnaise and ketchup. It does all kinds of cleaners and laundry detergents. And so it's a pretty neat technology. And uh, the way that the system works is uh, folks are, um, are basically um, encouraged to bring back their empty pouches or empty containers that they previously purchased at the market. And then these are, these are containers that they can clean out at home and they bring them into the store and the machine basically dispenses their products in the chambers. I don't know if you've had a chance to, re- to take a look at the actual Ecopod video, but it's, uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, the way it works is everything is dispensed by weight. Um, and the reason that technology works that way is that these liquids tend to be denser in colder climates. So you can't do it by time because then when it's very cold, unfortunately people will not get the exact amount of product. But if it's weighted, the density is always the same and the volume, so they actually get a, uh, a consistent dispensing. And so that's how it works. It has a bunch of other bells and whistles. It has a, um, a monitoring system uh that is a rod that goes into each bulk container inside the machine and it's basically just a a float switch that goes up and down and is connected to a wi-fi uh uh signaler um that uh is connected to a gps and it basically says uh, machine number 10 in location uh x y and z in miami uh is running low on product and so it'll send uh, a signal to the store clerks or the actual uh, stock boys, and to us also, and let them know it's time to change a container. Uh, the last thing we want is somebody to be doing something right for the environment. And when they go to it, the machine doesn't have the product. So uh, these are all, I mean, it has all kinds of other things, safety features, where children can't just go in there and put a bottle and press a button. So it, it's got a lot of little things uh, that make it very unique. The system was patented by my firm. And uh, just only because it was, it's just a, it was such a large amount of work and expenditures. And so we went ahead and did that. Uh, the concept came about almost like 20, I would tell you almost 30 years ago, probably. This time flies so by, by so fast. And so I owned at the time a uh, chemical detergents manufacturing company. And so I came up, I wanted to come up with the way to provide a cheaper product to the end user and also um, save money on the actual containers. And again, this is an institutional type product, which it was like in big drums. And so, you know, definitely was pushing on the environmental issue besides the savings. But the reality is that back then the environment wasn't an issue as it is today. Uh, you know, in 30 years, the population has grown substantially, and people are getting very, uh, you know, they're, they're very aware of the amount of plastic floating in the ocean and the microplastics and how it's affecting, you know, our ecosystem and our health. So um, bottom line is the timing is perfect now uh, for the EcoPod. Unfortunately, we did have kind of a standstill period because of the pandemic. Um, you know, it was very difficult to, 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 to move into uh, the areas that we wanted to be in, but that's changing really fast. Um, so, you know, we're, 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 we consistently 
continue to approach the, the Walmarts, the Costco's, the Targets, uh, the Kroger's. Uh, there is a lot of resistance because they're used to doing business a certain way. And unfortunately, it comes down to return stock dividends and changing the way that they distribute and package is a huge undertaking. So, you know, unfortunately, uh, <laughs> the dividends take uh, a precedent over the actual environment, you know, and uh, we're very happy to see the fact that under the new administration, there is a call for change in the board of directors. And so, um, you know, it's, it's starting to make a change by all of that. And our system is being received better, uh, but not where we want it to be at yet. Got it. So that really follows up into the yeah, next question um, about how retailers have responded to the idea. Well, uh, at first glance, they love it. You know, they say, wow, you know, they say the usual, why didn't I think of that kind of thing, you know? And uh, then, uh, you know, we, we tested, we actually had a very uh, good uh, pilot testing with Unilever up in their headquarters in New Jersey. And the system uh, was presented to uh, their investors on investor day. And uh, all of the institutional investment firms were there to, you know, to see the yearly report of uh, how things had gone the pre previous year and how uh, Unilever was looking to go into the future. So they actually had the Equipod there branded with a Unilever name. And it said powered by Equipod. So that's the kind of receptiveness that we've had. But as time has gone by, there is still a lot of resistance uh, because they started saying, well, wait a second, if we take this on, then that means that uh, we're not going to need as much um, uh, logistics uh, support as we do, as we need, uh, jobs, et cetera. But unfortunately, and I know I'm getting a little bit ahead of the question, is that we're creating jobs too. You know, we're creating a lot of jobs. I mean, we could have thousands of these machines, not more than that because it's just, um, it's not just for the supermarket. You can be in an auto parts store or at a Home Depot or a Petco. And uh, it's just, it has to be the way of the future. But again, uh, Wall Street has a different way of approaching things, uh, but we are starting to see a change. Uh, the biggest one has been the, the one with Exxon Mobil, where four seat members, were, or no, three, excuse me, three were replaced um, by new, uh, more green-minded type of directors. And so in the boardrooms, uh, the, sh uh, the directors, the shareholders are really starting to make a difference in pushing. So, uh, you know, I think it's going down the right path. Uh, hopefully um, it goes down uh, in a consistent fashion my biggest concern is some of them make a pledge, but they say, okay, we're going to be plastic free in the year 2060, you know, and we're here we are 40 years away or 30 years away. And my concern is not just that, is that we finally get there. And then they say, oh, we need more time. You know, the reality of the matter is that they got to understand that since uh, the industrial revolution took place, it's only really been uh, like a hundred years, a little bit more. And we have this mess going on. So imagine another hundred years, but in any event, uh, they, love, they love it at first, um, but then they see certain repercussions and disruptions. And unless the government gets very involved, uh, especially in the plastic side, Congress presented the Free From Plastics Act, um, which hopefully will be uh, approved shortly and then it'll go to the Senate. Um, but again, you know, we're seeing lights at the end of the tunnel. Henry, how are plastic waste and climate change connected? Well, uh, they're connected because PET, which is polyethylene, try, I always uh, get the last scientific word uh, bad, but it's, it's oil derived. It's a fossil. And so Shell and Exxon and all these people generate an enormous amount of money from the pellets that are made that are then melted into the containers. So not only is it bad for the ocean, but it's bad for carbon emissions, you know, it's a fossil. 
So uh, that's the correlation there. Got it. So, Henry, where can people find one of these kiosks? Well, unfortunately, right now we're in South Florida only. Uh, you know, our plans uh, are to be at every corner of the globe if we can, but obviously we're focusing on the U.S. Um, and what we're trying to do is get into the distribution chain of these huge markets. Um, and not just the markets, but really the CPG companies, the consumer products good companies, like the Tides of the World, the Unilevers, the Colgate Pomalas, not uh, to dispense their products. You know, we're not here to dispense our own product, which our products are great. We make great home care and personal care, but our goal is to to offer this to everybody. You know, so um, bottom line is right now we're we're here in South Florida, but overnight, if one of these companies says, hey, let's start rolling them out, like Walmart originally wanted to test it at the beginning of the pandemic situation, unfortunately, uh, like in 10 stores um, to see the receptiveness. And uh, obviously, we were very excited. Unfortunately, things are still not completely back to normal. We're starting to to reach out to them again. They, uh, big companies like that got delayed because there's a stagnate, sex stagnation from the time that the pandemic into getting back to normal, you know? So they, they run a little bit behind, but I'm very hopeful um, that uh, they start being receptive again. And uh, the CPG companies are the ones that can really make a difference by pushing the, also the uh, retailer. Uh, the retailer also can make a difference because they do a lot of private labeling you know, the Walmarts have their own private label where they do their own stuff. It's great product. Uh, it's just about every, uh, every retailer has them. So bottom line is that these systems take like two, two days from the beginning to the end uh, to manufacture. Uh, it could basically become just like a uh, car manufacturing facility. And we can, pretty, we can pump them out pretty fast. Um, but again, um, in my in my organization, we're just dying to to, to have it done uh, as soon as possible. You know, get that that motion going. Henry, do you have plans to expand EcoPod into more areas? So, you know, look, they um, everybody is very aware of this situation at a corporate level. Um, it, it's definitely frustrating to see the the slow pace. But I will tell you that the amount of inquiries that we get about uh, where our locations are at, are you in Tennessee, are you in Chicago, are you in Honolulu, are you in New York? And for us, it's very frustrating to see that um, because we, we definitely want to be there. Um, but, uh, you know, at least little by little is better than nothing at all, you know. So we'll take it. Henry, thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Oh, thank you very much. Pleasure meeting you. <laughs>